true. Again, the test statistic that, uh, the, that Cato calculated was 3.253. So we're just going to put that. Now, if it was negative, put it in the left box. If it was positive, put it in the right box here. So again, we're going we're to put that in. So 3.253 right here. 3.253. Now it will automatically adjust to the other box. All right, so the other one will just do. So I found the percentage in the tail corresponding to the test statistic, but it also incorporated the other tail. So in a two-tailed p-value calculation, you actually add these two together. So 0.0057 plus 0 0.0057 gives us the point zero zero one four that um, Staccato gave us. Right? Staccato gave us that point zero oh sorry point zero zero one one. Well, actually a little little bit different. But that's the general idea. Now if I wanted to do this problem with um, suppose I wanted to do this problem with um, a randomized simulation. So with a, what if I want to get the p-value from a randomized simulation? Alright, well we can do that. All right. So again I, I have um, 194 uh, people out of 329 total. So if I go to stat key, now under randomized hypothesis test, this is the randomized simulation for proportions, you, you click test for single proportion. Now we're going to simulate the null hypothesis. Again, I'm going to leave it as 0.5 since that's what I put it in. And I want to put in edit data. I'm going to put in 194 out of 329. Everybody see that? You got that okay? So 194 to 329. There's our original sample proportion, 0.59. Now in simulation, instead of using a, a z-score test statistic, I'm going to actually just use the real sample proportion. After all, the p-value definition says it's the probability of getting the sample data or the sample statistic or more extreme by sampling variability if the null is true. It doesn't say the probability of getting the test statistic or more extreme, though, though that can be used. So I'm going to use this sample proportion. So the computer is going to create thousands of random samples from the premise that the population proportion is 0.5. So let's do that. Got lots of random samples here. There we go. I created 5,000 of them. And again, this was a two-tailed test, so I'll click two-tail. Um, again, if you right now it's set at 0 0.025 in each tail, this would be sort of where the computer thinks is a significant difference. So these two is almost it's not quite a critical value because it's not a z-score, something to compare your z-score to. It's something to compare this original sample proportion to. So this original sample proportion was 0.59. Does that fall in either of these two tails? Well, the right tail, they says, starts at 0.553 in this simulation, and the left tail starts at 0 0.444. 0 0.59 is definitely in the tail, so again, significant. But that's not the p-value. The p-value is the probability of this original sample data, right? Point, or this sample statistic right here, the sample proportion, 0 0.59. So I'm going to put that in the right box right there, 0 0.59. Again, if it was negative 0 0.59 or something like that, or uh, if it was like 0 0.3 or something, I'd probably put it in the left box for the left tail. There we go. And there's our two tail percentages, 0 0.0012 and 0 0.0012. If I add those together, I get 0 0.0024. So that would be my estimated p-value, 0 0.0024. Okay, so you can actually calculate the estimate the p-value with the randomized simulation or with the traditional um, test statistic and uh, z-score curve. So that's what a two-tail. All right, let's look at one more here. So this that's when we ask students how much do you spend on a meal when you eat out. And um, I want to uh, test the claim that it's more than $11, more than $11. So 
So my null hypothesis is that the population mean is $11, and my alternative hypothesis will be that the population mean is more than $11. So again, I'll go statistics, hypothesis test, one population mean. Again, now um, I'm gonna, I have raw data, so I'm going to click C5. That's where my average amount of money that these stat students were spending on uh, when they eat out. Again, I'm going to click the alternative hypothesis and change it to greater than. So I'm doing a right tail test. And the hypothesized mean, the number in the null hypothesis, I want to be $11. So I'm just going to type in 11. I'm going to leave it as a 5% significance level. All right, so there we go. So we see the test statistic right there. There's our critical value. Here's our p-value. Again, how did they get this number, right? Notice our sample size was 324. That means our degrees of freedom would have been 323. So if I wanted to look this up on the uh, theoretical distribution curve calculator in StatKey, go theoretical distributions T. And I'm going to type in the degrees of freedom is 323. And I'm going to click right tail. If I put in 0 0.05 in the tail, this would be the critical this would be the critical value. Let's see, is that pretty close to what Stack Cato got? Yeah, exactly the same as what Stack Cato got. Now that's not the p-value though, right? The test statistic is 2.675. The p-value is the probability in the tail corresponding to the test statistic. So if I go back and just put in 2.675 in the bottom box, that's going to give me the p-value. So here's our estimated p-value. Okay? That's sort of how that works. Um, again, I could also do this with randomized simulation. I will need the raw data though. So here's my Excel spreadsheet, the fall 2015 survey data. There's the meals, uh, how much they spend on meals. Again, I'll, I'll go back here and I'll go test for single mean under randomized hypothesis test. I'm going to go edit data, delete out the data that's in there, and paste in that meal data. This data, by the way, does not have an identifier. An identifier means you've got a word next to every number, and this one doesn't. But it does have a title or a header row, so I'm going to click header row. Oh, hold on one second here. Sometimes the title, if the title has uh, some weird things in it sometimes, so I think sometimes, I, if you ever get an error message like this, sometimes I delete out the title and see if that fixes it. Sometimes it doesn't like the titles if it has too many weird characters in the title. Uh, this one now, I'd uncheck the header row. It doesn't have a title now. Let's see if that works. There we go. All right, so there's our, there's our sample mean of 11.898. Again, I'm going to generate, I want to get the null hypothesis was $11, so I'm going to change the null hypothesis to $11. And now we're going to simulate the null hypothesis, right? So generate 1,000 samples a bunch of times, all right? Again, uh, I want the probability of getting this sample mean is going to be my p-value. So um, again, I'm going to click right tail. My sample mean was 11.898. That's the one where it says original sample. And there we go. There's our estimated p-value. Right. So the probability of getting the sample data or more extreme. Notice again, it took into account any sample means in the simulation that were even more extreme than the, sam the original sample mean we had by sampling variability if the null hypothesis was true. So this right here is the p-value. Okay? So I hope this was helpful. It's just giving you a little idea of how p-values are calculated. We'll be doing lots more examples of, of this idea, but I just wanted to give you a look at uh, at what the computer programs look like and, and how to calculate p-value. So this is um, Matt Tuchot in Intro Stats, and I'll see you next time.